So um, uh, the next one is yearbook theme development. Uh, so yearbook theme development, uh, one of the new things is it has to include opening page copy. Um, if not, it's going to be disqualified. So um, if you would like to, you can include a single page that explains your theme like to the judge, right? Um, I think that if your opening copy is strong enough, you probably don't need to do that. But if you would like to, the option is there. Um, so this is class A. Um, so I think, oh no, this is a little bit of everything. Now this is class A. So an entry for your book theme development can only consist of 10 spreads. That includes your um, cover and then 10 additional two page layouts. If you want to enter individual pages, um, you can do that, but it's up to 20 individual pages. So the equivalent of two spreads. You cannot take screenshots and put things, like put two of these layouts on one eight and a half by 11 and then get more entries. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I'm just saying like, this, is, this was their entry. Um, the other thing to think about is sometimes less is more. Right? You don't have to submit all 10 spreads. If you only want, if you can get away with entering your cover and three other things, or cover opening and three other things, go for it. There, just because it says that you can doesn't mean that you have to. And I think that that goes along with Marcia and the headlines. Like, is it going to hurt or is it going to help? Um, so when, when we enter uh, or the student center for yearbook theme development, um, I think visual variety is important to have on your spread. Um, and so make sure that these guys included a people page. I think that's great. There's their opening copy. They included a title page and that's fine. They have some sports, but then I think that they have some academics and then they also have an event. So if you are a traditional themed book or a traditional book where you have five sections or six sections, you can include something from each section. If you're more of an umbrella or a chronological book, Make sure that you, you include a little bit of both. Some, some schools did include people pages. Um, I think that it's important that if that's how you're covering feature stories, um, you could include people pages. But at the same time, are people pages really that different? <laughs> I mean, go back one. Yeah, I think that one's there just to show the cover design motif. Let's continue. Yeah, this is just cover. But that freshman page down there has it's, it's oh, showing how it's related to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But but if I was if I just had if I had nothing else there, I probably wouldn't submit my yeah. people pages. Um, yeah. Again, you're seeing that spread that was used in yearbook layout in the yearbook um, team development. If you are, um, if you're submitting those pages for yearbook layout, you probably should go in your theme because they're the really good ones, right? Um, this was uh, Ralston, and Ralston did this unique motif on their um, on their photos. I think it works. Um, so I I think if you know the rules and you can break them intentionally, I think that there's some merit in that. However. Um, if it's hexagons, but your theme has nothing to do with a hexagon shape, I think we have evolved past the use of like one singular graphic element that's used in the same spot on every single page throughout the entire book, right? So they've got this like moon thing going on. I think it's really eye catching right there. And then even using it kind of behind their headlines, um, I think that's kind of nice. And I think that it, it evolves just like the moon. So, um, it's yearbook themes are unified and cohesive. They're easy to understand, um, include a variety. And then the other thing that I wanted um, everyone to know is that with awards, um, I had talked to Taryn, so tell me if I'm wrong, but you can enter up to three students for yearbook theme development. We all know that this is a staff award because it's your entire staff that works on this uh, and pushes this through. However, the students who medal will get a medal at stake. You have the option to order a plaque and you also have the option to order additional medals. 
Is that correct? Yes. Um, so that's why, so we had one in the past and um, as soon as we found out, I got in contact with the NSAA and, and I went to my activities director and said, we have the option to order medals. We should order them for every single student on class and it should come out of your budget. And, and he did. Yeah. And he did it. So I think, I mean, what's the difference between <coughs> us and a basketball team that everybody, including the student manager, gets a medal? Mm -hmm. So um, that's the way my activities director took it. And so he's like, yeah, we should definitely do that. And I think that they're like $3 or they're yeah. not expensive. So it's not like you're buying a $20 medal for every kid. Okay. So, so is that something still, we can still do? Because I had contacted you after state. Um, for my kids in your book theme development, and I was told no, that there was no additional medals to be ordered. Um, I'm gonna have to reference that specific, but I feel like it was a too low of place to do the plaque. But what we're planning on doing moving forward is that you can order plaques for any place. Oh, so, so in the future? Yes. Okay. Now, if that's something, just email me and I'll see if we can. Yeah, because I sent in, I sent you the PDF and I yes. to my AD and he said, yep, yeah, because that's what we have done in the past. Yeah. And I feel like if it's like a first or second place in something like, I would just oh. let him order it. Why not? I mean, let's, let's I order, order it. order it. And it doesn't hurt anything. That's what I was told. So, yeah.